This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome everyone to the GSMC Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malinoff. With me is Mark Souza. We got a lot to talk about in the world of sports. We got Kyler Murray officially declaring for the NFL draft. We'll see if he ends up in the MLB or the NFL. We'll and uh, we'll see if he gets that fifteen million dollars from the A's. Probably not, in my opinion. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Also, we'll talk about the NBA uh, and LeBron James's questionable injury and how long will he actually be out for. And uh, we'll do other news as the as the uh, podcast progresses. But first, of course, Kyler Murray officially declaring for the NFL draft. Experts say he'll go in the top ten. Where do you see him drafting, Mark? In the NFL draft, I think that I think he's a lock to be a top twenty pick. If I had to guess. I'd say he probably lands in the top 10 because I think a team will be excited about him and move into the top 10 if they don't already have a need and a pick in the top 10. So you're seeing someone will trade up rather than one of the other already the top pick? Yeah, I, I say he's top 20, though. Uh, and some people might say, well, that's kind of low. I mean, he's a Heisman Trophy winner. But if he goes to the Combine and he measures at like 5'8", then that could throw some teams out. He probably he, well, he might like decline. Which will be I mean, really suspicious. Can somebody actually not do the height and weight part? Because it's not a drill. I don't know. I, I don't. Can think you he, decline to get measured? I think you need the act. I think you need actual like height and weight. I, I don't know, but I think for him that would be a bad decision if he decides not to get measured. But that's yeah. kind of like admitting fault, right? Like uh, yeah, admitting that you're short. Yeah. Or or the height. I mean, if anything, if anything, if he knows he's that short, he should just own it. Just be like, yeah, I'm five eight. But has anyone actually just went up and asked him what's your actual height? I don't think anyone's actually been up went no. up to him and asked him. Plus, like, I don't know. Nobody said anything about his height until he d- he decided like maybe I'm gonna play football, which was kind of weird to me. Well, how how tall was Johnny Menzel? Like six feet tall. He was. He looked like a lot shorter than that to me. Yeah. Was he billed at six feet? I think Johnny Manziel is about six feet. He wasn't shorter than Russell Wilson. He looked that short. Wilson is 5'10 or 5'11. So. I don't know. I can still see like Jacksonville, even Miami picking him. Um, Johnny Manziel is listed at six feet. Oh, wow. Um, Drew Brees is six feet. Russell Wilson's 5'11. Russell Wilson is the shortest starting all right, quarterback. Well, I see Jacksonville as the best option. Well, not the best option, but the option to take, the most likely option to take him. But if you were a team outside the top ten, would you? Tr- who who would you be? That that would trade up. That is like, what team would you think will trade up for him? I actually think Jacksonville wouldn't be a team that'd be interested in him. I don't think the Dolphins would be either. If I had to guess, maybe Washington. Um, certainly. I think Denver could be in on him. Mm-hmm. I don't think Jacksonville though, because I think Jacksonville is ready to win now. Like they, they're, have a, they're done with Bortles. Like well, right, they, right, right. Uh, they're not. But gonna, I think they're. I think they are. A, I think they are the team that will pursue Foles the hardest. Yeah, but who else is like available in the free agent market? That's a quarterback. Uh, as of right now, we expect Foles to be a free agent. I think we expect Bridgewater to be a free agent. Probably Sam Bradford. If I had to guess, those would be the three. If Jacksonville signs Sam Bradford, they just they're giving up on the season, in my opinion. Is that's yeah. ridiculous? Do you think that guy's going to win you games? Because he he's he's done. Well, he's clearly well, done. You, if you sign Sam Bradford, you're not really signing him to win a Super Bowl. You're signing him to be there until your younger guy kind of shows up. Kind of what Arizona did with um 
Josh Rosen. They so signed Bradford. If, if they, they okay, Rosen. so they do sign Bradford, the Jackson Jaguars. That is, I'm saying they're taking one at least one of the quarterbacks in the draft. Who's that? Either Haskins or Murray. No, which team are you talking? Oh, about? Jacksonville. If they sign Bradford, then I'm saying, oh, they're going to go for a rookie quarterback. They could. Just... The only thing is that that's the only explanation. I for think me. that if they go with a rookie quarterback, I think they're going to have to shuffle their team. I think you start by trading a guy like Jalen Ramsey. You you probably have to make a, a number of moves. What can you get for Ramsey? First round pick? <laughs> I, yeah, I'd say so. He's what top three in the league. I I think any first? team would love. I know that he has an attitude and things like that, but that dude brings it. And he's well, like really you can good. say the same thing for Antonio Brown. You can say the same thing for even Khalil Mack had that kind of an issue. Some people said. You but, know what? Here are some unrestricted free agent quarterbacks. Okay, go. Tyrod Taylor. Mm, okay. Josh McCown. Teddy Bridgewater. I feel like they're going to re-sign McCown because of his relationship with uh, Darnold. Robert Griffin III. He could be an option. Ryan Fitzpatrick. That actually could be who the Jacksonville Jaguars go for. Yeah, and then you start to get into like Brock Osweiler as a free agent. Um, okay, but I could see the Dolphins or the Jaguars taking Fitzpatrick and thinking he can be a guy because he can win games. He, we, he's been proven. We prove, we've seen him prove that. Yeah. For sure. Um, exactly. So Fitzpatrick could be an option for Jacksonville. All right, let me ask you. Would you get Tyrod Taylor or Ryan Fitzpatrick? Because those are the two that really stood out to me. I am just not a fan of Tyrod Taylor, to be honest with well, you. Well, he still stood out to me just because he has the experience as turning quarterback. Yeah, no, no, I get it. He's going to be – somebody's going to pay them pay him pretty good money to be a backup quarterback most likely. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, I'd rather see what Teddy Bridgewater has, to be honest with you. I'd I'd be way more interested to see the upside that Bridgewater has. Even RG3, I think I'd rather see him than Tyrod. I I know people might think that that's weird, but I'm just not the biggest Tyrod guy. I would would love to see RG3 get an opportunity. Same with Teddy Bridgewater, because Teddy was pretty good with the Vikings before his injury. Yeah, he's still young, too. He has a lot of potential. I think he's only like 26. Like, come on. He's super. Didn't he almost lose his leg from that injury? It's a pretty bad injury. It was pretty bad. It was a. Needs over a year of recovery. Yeah, it was, it was bad. So hope maybe do you all right? Uh, do you see you? So you see Teddy Bridgewater possibly in a Jaguars uniform at the new number five, if you will. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I I think whatever team. I mean, even if you're Jaguars or the Giants or another team that needs a quarterback. Do you think the Giants are going to be looking for a quarterback, or do you think they're still going to be? I think uh, Case Keenum stubborn. might be a free agent too. I think the Broncos might cut him. I, re- I really would. It was a pretty out. disappointing season, but I don't think one season is going to do it. I think if he. But if you're the Broncos and mm-hmm. you could cut Keenum and get Nick Foles, don't you do that in a heartbeat? Mm, I don't know. You I mean, I'm not lot. the biggest Nick Foles guy, but I'm definitely not a Case Keenum guy. That's for sure. Case Keenum is a backup quarterback. But Case Keenum is a backup quarterback that had a good season on a really good football team. Yeah, but that football team didn't even change much, and they had a supposed to look better quarterback in Kirk Cousins and nothing much happened. I mean, I know people will say whatever they want about Kirk Cousins, but I'd still take him 10 out of 10 times over Case Keenum. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we're talking about, is Keenum one of the bottom five starters in the NFL? He's got to be in there, right? Or close. Well, let's see. Who would be in the bottom five? I mean, obviously some people are injured, so like Alex Smith is no, better than Who's him. number 32? Starters, probably one of the rookies, like Rosen. I was going to say Bortles. Maybe Bortles. Um, if we're talking about non-rookies, veterans who are just not that good, Dalton's got to be in there. Bortles has to be in there. Uh, I forgot else? Dalton even – did he even play this season? Yeah, he did. But he got hurt again. But Jeff Driscoll took his place, and I that's all I knew from that season. Let's see. Starting quarterbacks that are not rookies that are really bad. Bortles. Brady. I'm kidding. Dalton. I'm kidding. Um, gosh, it's not a huge list that are just absolutely awful. Yeah, they're 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 always they're, when you're a starting quarterback in the NFL, you have some. Some people talent. say Cousins was terrible, but I wouldn't say he's bottom five. I don't know. He had a pretty bad season, all things considered, though, for the money he got. He had a tough season, but I think it's more the expectations were really high rather than he was bad. Well, they're coming off a near Super Bowl appearance. That's why I'm gonna yeah. Like the Vikings had a lot more problems than just. Kirk Cousins, but it's easy to see, like, oh, he's different, so we're going to blame him, you know? 
Mm-hmm. The scapegoat, you mean? Yeah, he's a scapegoat because, like, yeah, we we can say the team was mostly the same, but, like, no team is the same when they come back. Even if the personnel is the same, the team is either they're either better or they're worse. Like, they either got better well, or they, they got, got worse. Well, they got way worse. 13-3 yeah. and three to not making the playoffs, that's a pretty bad uh, downhill yeah, what they, miss, they missed the playoffs by like half a game or a game. All they had to do was beat the Bears, but, again, mm-hmm. that was a tall order because of how good the Bears were playing at the time. And if they make that field goal from 43 yards out, will you be looking take taking maybe the Bears are in the AFC title game instead of at mm-hmm. home? So who knows what would have happened? Uh, what if they beat if they made that field goal? Who would they have played the Chiefs or would they have played the Patriots? Who are we talking about? The Bears. Oh no, they would have won. It's, you know, I'm oh, right. they're on the NFC. Oh NFC, I'm sorry, you're right. In, excuse me. The Bears would have played I, the number one, uh, the number uh, they two were saying, seed. They would have played, they played the, Rams. the Rams. Which the they, Cowboys would have went to New Orleans. Cowboys would have been destroyed by New Orleans. I think we agree on that. Probably. The Bears. But they might did ha- beat the Saints. Yeah, but the Bears might have a chance against the Rams. In all things considered. Well, they did beat them before. Yeah. There was there was a, there was a lot of uh, a lot would have changed definitely. Um, but. Overall, I would do say there's. It's hard to say of how many terrible quarterbacks are on the NFL. Does Does Major League Baseball need Kyler Murray more than the NFL, though? I mean, what was his stats in Oklahoma? Like he batted under three hundred, if I remember correctly. He batted under three hundred, and but he was more a defensive player, wasn't he? That's what he's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but quote isn't, unquote, isn't that weird to draft somebody so high in the first yeah, round for defense? That's exactly what um my family, my brothers have said. My brother and my dad. Have like, like any any kid in your double A program can can play defense. You know what I mean? Not, yeah, I'm not absolutely. saying like it's not a good a big part of the game, like but like could, like that's that's the easiest skill to have in in yeah you minor could be, you could be a great defender, but if you can't hit the ball, then that's not going to help. He was under 300 batting at Oklahoma, and legend, I mean, the history shows that if you're under 300 in college, you're probably not going to be a good pro You're not going to make it to the majors. I mean, there is an opportunity to get better, don't get me wrong, but I mean, what's how his upside often, as a hitter? How often have we seen like the first round be guys that hit like 400 and they exactly. hit like 30 home runs? And uh, he was the number 36 prospect in the draft. It seems pretty high, I'll think. But he was picked, what, number, like, 10? I think it was the name rather than the player himself. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. He was the first high schooler schooler ever to be named an Under Armour All-American in football and baseball. He was an All-American? Mm-hmm. Oh, in high school? Yes. Oh, okay. That makes a little more sense. He probably played great in high school. I wouldn't doubt that. But Mm -hmm. college, obviously, he struggled. Obviously, he shined more in football. Yeah, I think I think football might be the best place for him. I know it's like, but I think the height he would get, the money he's asking for from the A's, he would get instantly in the. Fun NFL. fact: Kyler Murray's father, Kevin Hat, was in a similar situation. He was drafted out of high school in baseball, and he hit one sixty one oh, in Jesus. in the minors and quit, and then decided to play quarterback at Texas A and M. So you, his dad will say, "Play football." From the sounds of it. Yeah. So in 2017, Kyra Murray hit 122 in college. <laughs> no home runs, six RBIs, and 12 No bases. home runs? And then in the eight, 2018 season, he did better. 296. He slugged at 398, 556 on base, 10 homers, 47 r- runs, batted in, and 10 steals in 51 mm, games. That's not first-round pick to me, though. Yeah, um, some people say that he looks like the next Andrew McCutcheon. That is very high praise for the guy with average stats like that. But going back, not really talking about him, does Major League Baseball need this win against the NFL? They don't. They don't. Really? Like, even if he made the majors, he's probably going to struggle. And But what do you think about I – mean, I'm not talking about his on-field performance. I'm just simply saying, do they need this win against NFL? Because we know that baseball is probably third in this country right now in terms of popularity in sports. You've got to go NFL one. NBA has been surging for years and years and years. But even if they – even if Murray says, I'll play in the MLB, people are going to be like, he should have played in the NFL and make the MLB look weak in – just it's the, the, the thing is, is that Kyra Murray is a name though, so like people would 
tune in to watch him play baseball. Sounds like a Tim Tebow type of aspect. I mean, yeah, kind of. Like, baseball, what's the problem with baseball? Kids don't watch it. Like, that's mm-hmm. the thing. That's yeah. the thing about baseball. Kids, like, uh, let's see. When you were a kid, mm-hmm. some of the most possible, so me, you, and, you know, anybody who's probably in their 20s or, or older, when we were kids, baseball players were very popular. Yeah. Ken Griffey was probably the most popular athlete in the yeah. 90s. Oh, yeah. In the 90s, 100%. Think about that. A yeah. baseball and player. And then, like, Ichiro came along, and he became a huge superstar. But even guys like Barry Bonds, yeah. super popular. Greg Maddox, super popular. Sammy Sosa. Mark McGuire, exactly. Yeah. So on and so forth. Now, there's nobody in baseball that you can say is a top five popular athlete. I, I couldn't. I, I at least couldn't stand by that. Yeah, I couldn't either. But if I had to pick a baseball player in the top five, Bryce Harper, maybe. That, I mean, maybe, maybe Harper, maybe Mike Trout. And it's like in football, and in basketball. Oh, that's easy. You know, like LeBron James and Bryce Harper both walk into a club. You know, who's who's getting talked to and who isn't even being looked at? You know, Bryce like, Harper's hair would get more attention. But like a lot of people would be like, "Who is your friend?" LeBron, like LeBron, who's your friend that you brought? He's, yeah, exactly. he's a, who's this uh, good looking guy I, I that think, you brought I to the club? So. I think some people be like, oh yeah, you're the baseball guy. I yeah, you're that's... that. Don't you do something on TV too? Yeah, you know, like, they wouldn't say who's that. They would say, oh, you look familiar. And it's not just LeBron, but like, let's just take Steph Curry for example. Steph Curry, if you ask a 12 year old kid in Oklahoma, no, nah, that was kind of a silly thing to say because Kyler Murray went played there. But yeah, if yeah. you if you ask a 12 year old kid. Who is this player? From Alaska. Let's go there. No, we can stay with Oklahoma. Okay. You, you ask a 12-year-old kid, who's this guy? And it's Steph Curry. And who's this guy? And it's Bryce Harper. They might probably not recognize Bryce Harper as easily as Steph Curry. Possibly. But, again, he it's like a 50-50 with Bryce Harper, 100% for Steph Curry. And then but, in football, Tom Brady, obviously, mm-hmm. is a, a face. But even a guy like Russell Wilson. I feel like Russell Odell Wilson's Beckham very Jr., popular. Antonio Brown. Yeah, Odell Beckham um, Jr. Like, you put him on a Wheaties box, people know who he is, you yeah. know? Uh, you can even put, like, I don't Zeke know. Zeke Elliott's very popular. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, who else am I thinking about? You can put Baker Mayfield on the box. And Baker know. Mayfield is, you know, kind of the guy who's hot right now in that, terms that, that, of That's what I meant. In like, terms of like, he's a rookie still, granted, yeah. he, but he's still very recognizable. Yeah, he was a great college player, so he was recognizable in college, and then he transformed to the NFL. So and it's weird to say this because they have helmets; you can re- not really see their faces, but they're still recognizable. So I kind of feel like Major League Baseball needs this win, and I feel like they know they need this win against the NFL because why are they caving to Kyler Murray's demands? They haven't yet. Well, I mean, apparently the offer is close to the fifteen million. He de- that's what he demanded. And baseball has a standing offer to him, and he still has 48 hours to back out of his... Baseball, you mean the A's, just clarifying. Well, no, but the A's got approval from Major League Baseball to do it. They had to go outside their rules to offer him a contract that was higher than what the rookie wage scale was. It was 4.7, so... And his argument, or the argument is, if I'm drafted in the top 15, I'm going to make about $15 million on my rookie deal in the NFL. So... And then you're looking at the A's, the... One of the poorest teams in the baseball. He needs to go play football. He needs to go play football. He wants to play football. He loves football He's, more. He literally is saying to you, I love football, but if you make me an offer I can't refuse, then fine, I'll play on your. I'll play your sport. Why can't he just play But if both? I play your sport, I'm not playing in the minor leagues. So he said he needs to be guaranteed a roster spot, which is not going to happen. No I mean, way. I mean... It can happen. They can offer it to him, but he's going to struggle. The you know dude how, batted yeah. under 300. It's going to take him two to three years to be major league capable That's hitter. being generous, by the way. Yeah. Bryce Harper was a phenom, and, yeah, he's like the one. He's the, what, the one example of the outlier. He's the outlier. He was That guy could play in major leagues at 18 years old. Like, he could. Mm-hmm. But he's, like, the only one. Everybody else needed time, you know? Yeah, he he needs time himself, but he's he's a popular figure right now, and he's taking that at, at advantage. I would do the same thing if I was him. I mean, I'm not taking that away from him, but the fact remains, he is. He, I feel like he has a better future in football, 
and uh, despite his height. I do want to point out, though, that him declaring for the NFL draft really doesn't mean anything because he can still go to spring training. He can still play baseball. He, he Deion Sanders did the same thing. Bo mm-hmm. Jackson did the same. I don't know why people haven't really considered the fact he might play both. Like, I still kind of expect him to go to spring training. But, like, why wouldn't he play both? Why not take the opportunity to play both? Uh, Probably because you want to fortify a career in one sport before you try doing two at the same time. You know? I don't know. I think I, I mean, like, take. it's easy to say, like, why don't you play both? But, like, what if you're average at both instead of being really good at one? Well, he's really good at one. That's a, the, the thing is, though, is that he will need to be really good at both be- mm-hmm. or else he won't be able to play both. Like, what Major League Baseball team is going to be like, cool, you're going to be on our everyday roster, although you're not going to play some games because you're playing football if you're not really good. Like, Deion Sanders was a pretty good baseball player. He's obviously a better football player, but he was a pretty it good baseball player. It was his speed in, in the outfield, too. Uh, but uh, Murray's an infielder, isn't he? Outfielder. Oh, is he an outfielder? I thought it was... Um... So. I, I just I just don't see him successful in baseball. If he's guaranteed a opening roster spot in the majors, I'm sorry, that's asking too much in my opinion. Yeah. Uh I think we need to go to a break, but when we come back, we can talk a little Adam Gase. We can do a little NBA. Yes, we, we can. We got some injury news in the NBA in segment three that we'll break down and talk about in full detail. And of course, whatever happened in that Field goal challenge out in Chicago. I think we talked about that before. We'll update everyone on that scenario. See who the big winners were there. Who's getting free there was beer no for big a year? Winners. <laughs> Who's getting free beer for a year? We'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. There was more fun than uh, not, and then uh, success. We'll see that right after this. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We just finished talking about Kyler Murray and his declaring for the NFL draft and what does that lead to. Now we're going on to more NFL news as Adam Gase's uh, press conference, his opening press conference to becoming the head coach of the New York Jets, had some people opening their eyes. Uh, Yeah, you could say that. Um, What was going on with Adam Gase? He looked like he was, there was something going on. There was like, Someone slipped him he looks something. Like he had maybe maybe he was like having a night in Reno. I don't know. Um, uh, let's just say I feel like there was some illegal substance in his system at the time because he looked like. What was up with that? Uh, his is that his natural look? Is that his nat- oh, that's if not? If it natural, is, I've never it? seen it. Can you imagine that's like how he met his wife? Hi, how's it going? Bug eyed like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, what was going on? If you haven't seen the video... Oh, please watch it. ...of Adam Gase's crazy eyes in his introductory press conference as head coach of the New York Jets. It's almost like he was trying to, like, Jedi mind trick people or trying to, like, read their minds or something. There is also a video on Twitter of a taco superimposed. Yeah. And he's looking at it, and it's the backdrop is the Titanic music, and it's amazing. That's probably probably what he was thinking about. He keeps following the taco floating around the room. It's fantastic. But uh, what was more concerning to me, actually, Jeff, than his crazy eyes was really is more concerning his than that? comment. Yes. His comment when he was asked, 
by a reporter who would have control over personnel decisions. Oh, boy. And he did not know. And he said, you know what? I didn't even think to ask for that. How do you Red not flag. think to ask for that? Red flag. Oh, yeah. Challenge that. If I'm the Jets, though, I think that's a red flag, too. And I don't know. I wouldn't hire that person. It's like well, it's you go to a job now. interview and you don't care about your responsibilities or how much you're going to make. You're, you're just going to take this job no matter what. I mean, in all aspects, <laughs> is he going to find a better job than this? No, no, no. Probably not. But if I'm an employer like the New York Jets and I'm looking for a man to lead this team to the Super Bowl one day because on, honestly who hires a coach and doesn't want to win a Super Bowl? Oh, he can go A and A. He's good to go. You kind of don't want somebody coming in with very low expectations, right? Like you until, want somebody to come in and be like let's, let's be honest. Until Belichick and Brady are gone, I don't think anyone's taking that a- AFC East championship. You away know why he them. had those crazy eyes? Because, because at that moment when, Jets. when at that moment when he walked into the room he realized Oh crap. I'm still in the same division as Bill Belichick. Yeah, you didn't leave. <laughs> I just no, I just realized that he was a dolphin. He was he like, the "Oh my god, I just realized we play in the AFC East, and Bill Belichick just won another playoff game, and I'm screwed." If I was a coach in the AFC East and I got offered another job in the AFC East, I'd be like, "You better pay me a lot of money because I can't handle it. I can't handle playing the." Patriots twice in the same year. Maybe it's that look that you give when you realize. You think that one win this week, this <laughs> this this season against the Patriots, got him this job for the Jets? He could beat the Patriots. That look you give when you realize that your young quarterback from Southern California has to play Brady in twelve degrees to win a division one day. Oh God, that is a very <laughs> that's a damning <laughs> evidence, sir. He's oh that's. Yeah, the Jets. I I don't think Jets. I, I if I'm the Jets, man, I fire him today, and I just go a different route. I know that sounds crazy, but I that's could an you embarrassing imagine, press could conference. Could you imagine if they actually did that? People would. No one would go for that job. Anymore. Imagine. Imagine you liking a a team. I like a who, team. Got it. Who, who just hired a under five hundred coach from one of your rivals? Well, not by much. And then let's give him credit. It no, was, no, 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 I'm not done. Okay. okay. And then he comes in and just bombs the bombs the press conference. Okay. It's like, I'm gonna defend Adam Gase here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why he went under five hundred. I'm just saying we're not talking about you hiring Jim Harbaugh or like somebody in this league who like really did well. We're talking about a guy who's been under five hundred as a head coach in three years, for better for worse. It doesn't matter why. I'm just saying, you're already facing criticism, right? Your team's oh, facing yes. criticism for bringing in a guy who is not a winning coach from a division rival. You're like, why? You're like a Bengals fan asking, why is Hugh Jackson on our coaching staff when they signed him after Cleveland let him go? You're like, why are we doing this? Yeah. Uh, I understand that. But, one, he's not that far under 500. He's, like, two games under 500. So... He's he's never had like a like a what a three and thirteen type of season. He's always been up in the A and eight range. So, but the fact is, you're right. He has there is a lot of concern after that press conference. But I mean, who knows? I mean, this been can't end surprises. well, right? Like this can't end well. I'm gonna be a little optimistic and say there's possibility it can end well. What Why is not? what are the odds that in three or four years? After the Jets won the division or something like that, they're like, God, "You remember when Adam Gase had that funny press conference? Man, that was hilarious." Oh, it's that's probably going to be what the uh, the, the uh, eventually what's going to happen. But or are we going to hear? I knew he was the wrong hire, and can't you remember his press conference? Oh my God, how did we still continue with that bozo? You know, I like mean, that's going to be that's I mean, probably going to be been the thing. worse signings than him. I feel like there's worse options than him. Maybe. Wouldn't you agree? Maybe. You wouldn't agree with that? I mean, it's all about how he does, right? If he does well, then then yeah, there's worse. What if he comes in and goes 5 and 11 next year? I, He's going to have a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. You can't fire him after one season like Arizona. You can't you can't that's so impatient. You got to give the guy at least 2-3 years. Yeah. I just feel like I'd, 
that press conference is so uninspiring. If I was a Jets fan, I'd probably be. Oh, on. I agree with you. It, it, it not a good sign. And when people talk about me, like his eyes and looking like he's on some sort of. Um, he will be heavily scrutinized, like immediately. Like if they don't get out to a decent start, he's buried. They'll yeah. bury him in New York. Just watch this. He'll go fifteen. And you got to remember this: Adam Gase is a tough coach to play for. He benches players all the time. Look at how many times he benched Devonte Parker in the last two years. Kenyon Drake didn't get the ball. They will absolutely bury him in New York because that media that media is way different. In Miami, that, that's fine. You can do whatever you want when you're the Dolphins coach. No one is on you. New York media market is going to eat him alive if they don't start at least close to 500. Like if they start off one and five next year, forget it. He's done. Hmm. Interesting. You're probably right. But he's I'm, an abrasive personality. I'm going to wait to the week five of the 2019 season to see how this plays out. Yep. All right. Um, I, NBA Harden scored 57. Breaks uh, Kobe's 30 point streak record. He had 30 points by halftime. 36 to be exact. So he broke it by halftime. He did. Even before halftime, technically. Yeah. This, this is guy is a. Uh, he is on fire at this moment in time. I mean, he has been for a couple weeks now, but he for sure is on fire. Uh, has to be MVP at this point until further, until something changes. But, I mean, he's going out every single night, and he's just lighting it up. He scored 57. His team scored 55. Like, his team scored 55 points. Yeah. 112-94. The Rockets improved to 25 and 18. Grizzlies, they dropped to 19 and 24. Oh, did you hear about uh, Marcus Gasol? Uh, what happened to him? He, he, uh, he hurt his shooting hand, and uh, he's quoted in saying, I lost feeling in my shooting hand, and I couldn't get it back. So that's, that's kind weird. of a scary thing, for, in my opinion. That's pretty scary. Yeah. That's uh, definitely something to Last play night, the uh, Charlotte Hornets came into San Antonio and destroyed the Spurs. It was Tony Parker, his re- re- return to when, San Antonio. When, when did th- <laughs> okay, so the the Hornets didn't look good throughout this season. They looked kind of mediocre. They're 20 and 23. They still, they like, in the East, that's nothing. Not really, yeah. And they go and beat one of the hottest teams in the NBA right now, the Spurs, handily. Yeah, Kemba Walker had a good game, but the story here is that Tony Parker made his return. Um, he, he played for 19 minutes. He had eight points, yeah. granted, but, yeah, he's... Yeah. The Spurs fans showed him a lot of appreciation. It was oh, not course. a Kawhi return. Well, it wasn't... <laughs> he didn't, like, openly say, I want out or trade me or anything like that. He just... Yes. Yeah. It was a very quiet signing to the Hornets. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And I, I think everyone knew it was time to move on from Parker, Ginobili, and Duncan Spurs era. Spurs scoring 93 points is a little concerning. Charlotte's not the best defensive team. I mean, they're not the worst either, but... I mean, sometimes you have an off night. That's all I'm going to say about it. Yep. Uh, and then the Celtics, that game, the Celtics lost in the Nets 109-102. And during a free throw, <laughs> I forget who was shooting the free throws, but there was a chance saying Kyrie's leaving. Mm-hmm. Probably, I love that. I was having, a, I was laughing That's about the third that. loss in a row for Boston. Right after we heard that there's a little bit of turmoil the other day. Oh, with him and Hayward, just the team. Yeah, yeah there was. Uh, Kyrie they had like does, a team meeting. Kyrie doesn't seem very happy, does he? I think everybody on Boston's frustrated. Mm. They're, right. You know, they're in fifth place right now, and a lot of people have them as the best team in the East going into this season. And they are not. Yeah. They're, and it doesn't even look like they're that close, to be honest with you. They, no, I think both Bucks and I Raptors. Mean, they're 10, are, 10 and 13 on the road. But yeah. Not now good. now we say like the Bucks and the Raptors are the two best teams in the East, and they're far And then superior. Indiana. Indiana and Philadelphia are better than Boston right Indiana's now. Indiana's having a great season. That's very under the radar. But I do have to say like when you look at the Raptors, the Bucks, the Pacers, and 76ers, they would destroy the Celtics in a seven-game series. The thing about the Celtics is that they're trending down instead of trending up. I mean, they're getting closer to the eight seed than the one seed, and that's a little bit concerning. You're looking at, you know, they're looking at a first-round playoff matchup with Philadelphia, which the East is not that tough, Mm -hmm. but you don't want to be the five and playing the four. Like, be be the three. 
you know, be Indiana and play Miami. Be Milwaukee you know, and play Brooklyn. Look, looking Those at, are a lot looking easier Looking at games. both the conference standings, the, eight, the 9 and 10 seed for the East are way below 500, 19 and 24, and 18 and 24. Then you look at the West. The two teams that are 8 and 9 or 9 and 10 are 23 and 21. Yep. They would be way. They would be. The Lakers the, are currently out of the playoffs at this moment. Yeah, but they're they're still a winning record, which is incredible yep. to think about. I mean, even Minnesota would be in the playoffs in the East. Yeah, but that and then that. How many times we're going to talk about this? But it begs the question: Does the playoff situation need to change? Playoff seating, that is. I don't know. I I just feel I mean, like I feel like. I feel like what's going to happen? They're going to change it, and then the East will get better or something. Like I don't know. But, well, whatever. But I, f- I feel like there's way too many teams that are in the playoffs anyway, so, you know. Eight or 16? Half, more than half the league makes the playoffs. 16 out of 30. That's a good point. Maybe you just increase the league. Yeah. I I, I know tell you what, I know, I know one thing won't happen. They won't reduce the number of teams that make the playoffs. <laughs> so no, you will make it six? They will never do that. Playoffs will never go down in sports. They I, will always beca- expand. Well, because the NFL – players the nba players association excuse me would probably go on strike and say up yours why take away playoff opportunities or something like there's that. too much revenue in playoff games so they're in any sport they're not ever taking that away mm-hmm. it's like football football's at six right now they'll probably go to eight at some point i could see it why not uh, i i I, w- I wouldn't like that yeah but then you wouldn't care like ma- remember when people got upset about major league baseball going to five and then no one cared like after two years. Cause they're like, Oh, this playing game is actually kind of fun. Yeah. Well, because there's like, even though, know. even though the MLB wild card is the most Bush league rule to ever be written in the sports. We're talking about all you got to do is get the fifth seed and you win a one game playoff against the fourth seed and you're in the playoffs. Even if you're 10 games behind them in the standings, you, you play 162 games and it comes down to a one game playoff where record doesn't matter. Like, do you think it should be like a three best of three? <laughs> I don't think they should have the fifth team <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe. Like, what it, doesn't that upset? Like, isn't that upsetting? Like, oh, you would, play uh, yeah. 162 games and you're the fourth place team. And then you got to win one more game against a team you already have more wins than to to prove that you're the better team to go to the playoffs. Like that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's exciting. Don't get me wrong. We all watch it. Didn't the didn't the didn't the owners have to approve of this? Oh yeah, so, I think so. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, people want to watch it. But like, if you're talking about like fair or like, is this the best thing? No. It's just yeah. it is what it is, right? Like, um, what are you gonna do? Yeah. So the Jazz they won again. Yes. Jazz are hot them? right now, man. You know yes. you got to be on the they're lookout. Hot, they're hot as that egg on Instagram. Yeah, they are. I've seen that egg a few times. I like that egg on Instagram. Actually. It's all over. It's on Instagram. It's on Twitter. It's on Facebook. It's well, on. Well, it has everything. forty-one million likes as of right now. Do you know that the Utah Jazz? Are tied with the Warriors for the longest win streak in the West at four games. Really, only four? That yep. seems kind of short. The oh, as of right now, in not, the West, not, not in the entire. In the West, Toronto has a is currently, currently on a five game winning streak. You mean currently, not not throughout the entire season? Mm-hmm. That's the longest. Got it. Okay, I thought you meant that was the longest. I'm like, that's incredibly short. Toronto has the longest current winning streak at five right now, but they are in the East. The Utah Jazz have the easiest well, right, actually, schedule the rest right of the season. Underneath them, under the four games, is the Kings at three. Do you know that the Jazz have the easiest strength of schedule the rest? They're probably going to the they're probably going to squeeze in in a higher seed in the playoffs, guaranteed. Oh yeah, so they're back. I think they make the playoffs easy. Let's see. They don't play they're at today. 20, they're at twenty four and twenty one. Mm-hmm. They beat the Pistons. I last think they'll nine. still get back in the top four. Yes, and tomorrow they play the Clippers, which is probably one of their toughest games. Yeah, it's a tougher game, but the Clippers are on a three-game losing streak, and they're 5-5 five and five in their last 10. That team has been kind of going down lately, the Clippers. Mm. Yeah. But it is a tough game. It's a Western Conference game. Clippers are still a good team. I'm not going to take anything away from them. Yep. Um, Pelicans, they're trying desperately to get back in the playoff hunt they beat the clippers last night 
Anthony Davis scored 46 points. He's a beast. I I can't explain. And that anything. was on the road, so it's a tough one for the Clippers to drop. The Clippers are now 24 and 19. Pelicans are one or excuse me, 21 and 23. They're getting close. They're still a couple games back of the playoffs at this moment in time. I believe they're two games back of Utah. We will see what happens there. But, um, yeah, that that was a a good win for the Pelicans as they look to – I don't really know. When we look at the West right now, other than L.A. and Sacramento, is there a team below them that you think could make some noise? Kelly, you just said Sacramento is a team that is – Well, L.A. and Sacramento are tied in, in the ninth spot yeah, right Yeah, yeah, and it's just surreal. But um, can – Minnesota, New Orleans, Dallas, Memphis make any noise whatsoever. I can see either New Orleans or Minnesota making noise. I can even see Dallas making noise. I do not see the Grizzlies. I think Dallas noise. is done. You think Dallas is done? They're not that far behind. Dallas is 12 and 18 in the conference and they're pretty far behind. I mean, they're they're three full games behind at this point, which is a lot in the West. Uh, I will I will I understand what you're saying and I agree with you the fact that they're they're very low chance, but I, I'm not going to rule them out completely. I would say New Orleans has a better chance than Dallas, but I think that New Orleans is so dependent on Anthony Davis. So he can't miss like any games. Like The guy cannot get hurt at That's all. That's why I put an asterisk on the Pelicans because of the fact they rely so much on one player. Granted, there is a, a lot of teams that do that. The Lakers are a perfect example. But the fact is... They rely on him more than I think any team has ever relied on one guy before. You know what, though? Those Mavericks do rely on Luka a lot. Um, yeah, I just don't see it, man. I can't see the Mavericks being a playoff team. I mean, their their team's not that good. Anything They got possible. a good story, though. Luka's a good story. He's fun. Yeah, and who Memphis knows? Memphis just fell. They're done. 19 and 24. Yeah. Um, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Uh, should we take a break? We should. When we get back, what else we got on the agenda? Uh, we could talk about uh, a couple injury news and notes uh, in the NBA. All right, cool. We'll be right back right after this. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We finished rounding up the NBA and some uh, head coaching debacle in New York. Now we're moving on to some injury news. LeBron James is the biggest topic when it comes to injuries. He injured himself. He injured his groin, supposed strain, uh, on Christmas. But he hasn't been back yet. He has not. It has been about three weeks, and the initial timeline for his injury was three weeks. He is not back. Now, he'll be reevaluated tomorrow. But we're starting to see and read and hear things, you know, by people who are close to the situation, beat writers, national writers. There's some murmurs now that LeBron's not fully healthy, that this timeline will be pushed back. We will get official word tomorrow 
when the Lakers announce kind of what the plan of action is for LeBron at this time, but sounds like it's not too promising. Again, he's missed three full weeks. We read a rumor that from a source close to the situation, as reported by, again, numerous NBA writers, that he could play by the end of this month if he was to push it, but we're most likely looking at a mid-February to late-February return for LeBron, putting him at maybe six to eight weeks instead of the first initial three weeks. Um, Again, we'll find out tomorrow, but when you first heard that news, Jeff, what do you think? Uh, I think there's a lot more we don't know about. There's there's a lot in there. And maybe the injury's far worse than even Kobe knows. Or Kobe, I'm sorry. Uh, LeBron knows. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I might, I'm might i going to go out on a limb and say he tore it because he wouldn't be out this long if it wasn't something serious. Yeah, I mean, if he's out for another three, four weeks, then it seems like that'd be a torn groin. That's usually the timeline for for a muscle tear is about six to eight weeks. That would probably signal that. Um, do you think that the Lakers were, have been hiding this? Because they they did report right away that he didn't tear it. Like that was a that's what was yeah. Reported. But you can be denial, right? They don't, I guess, necessarily have to tell the it, truth. It, it's called lying. Is it? Or it's called uh, hiding the truth. All the other words known as lying. So we have to talk about it. The Lakers have been dreadful without LeBron. They're three and seven, and it's not just that they're three and seven; it's that who they've lost to. They've lost home games against the Knicks. They've lost home games against Cleveland Cavaliers, two of the worst five six teams in the league. Cavs are arguably the worst team in the league. The Bulls play the Lakers tonight. The Chicago Bulls will be coming to town. If they if the Lakers lose this game. Does anything change in LA? Like, is this panic mode time if they lose oh, to the Bulls? Um, without if if they don't have no brawn, the for Bulls a, have won ten games. I can see them losing. I don't see them making the playoffs if LeBron's out for another month or two. If get this, Jeff, if the Lakers lose tonight, they will have lost to the three worst teams in the Eastern Conference and the three worst teams in the NBA overall. In the last week, all mm-hmm. at home, that'd probably that's, signal problems. That's that signals a big problem. Do you know that they are the worst free throw shooting team in the NBA? That's you lose games on that. They were the worst free throw shooting team in the NBA with LeBron. They're even three percent worse without him. How can you be bad at three point I don't know, free I throws? Just, or if you're right, free throws. Excuse me, but that's 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 the easiest thing to do. Uh, let me ask you this. What is a bigger, more of a bigger deal? LeBron's injury or LeBron's, uh, probably his, um, frustration (laughs) with this young team. Oh, I would be. He's like, oh, why did I sign with this team? Oh, right. Hollywood. Yeah. It's LA. Yeah. I mean, if he, if it was not LA, he would avoid this team with a 10 foot pole. Do the Lakers need to make a trade for a star now, or should they not do anything until the offseason? I think it depends on when you know when LeBron returns and go from there. Let me ask you this. Okay. If LeBron doesn't return until the end of February, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say a month from now. It's middle of January. We are smack dab in the middle of January right now. Let's say the middle of February. Middle of February, okay? Are you following? Yeah, I'm here. If the Lakers are six games out of the eighth spot in the middle of February, do they consider shutting him down for the rest of the season? Because it is a groin injury, and yes, he could come back, but the last thing you want is for him to re-injure that because that is a serious – that would be a serious thing if he re-injured his groin. True, true, true. He's 34 years old. You don't want to ruin next season. But you only have a four-year contract with him, so you're giving up – but One you're already year. kind of the the mentality going into this season for the Lakers is already like we're not gonna make we're not gonna win it all this year. This is more of like a let's build for next year's big push. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't know. It's I mean signing him to a four year deal was a risk in itself because of his age and four years is not that long. Mm-hmm. It goes by very quickly. And is that what is that how you remember college? 
What? Well, you're like four years it goes by really quick. It sounded oh oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It I, sounded like you were giving the um oh yeah commencement for, speech. Yeah, seriously. You're like but, in these last four years we've learned so much about ourselves. No. Blah, blah, blah. And it just went by so fast. You know, everyone told me to enjoy college while and then it lasted. You have, to turn, you have to turn your tassel and then throw your hat. I didn't throw my hat. I I, my, I got it designed, so I was like, I'm not throwing this. You just um, got to throw and catch it. Yeah, I know. Uh, and we were indoors, so there was really no point. Um, it's, not, it's not as cool if it's indoors. Is it, why is it? Because it gets so hot in the summer or what? Well, no, because it looks cool when it's in the sky, not in the lights i'm saying why was your ceremony indoors oh because we had a smaller class i was at the university of arizona but i i went to my i didn't go to my whole school thing because it's not what you expect you don't actually walk up or anything it's just what? uh what kind you, of a college is this man no no because the college is so huge did they you do go to arizona can you let me finish did you go to arizona or did you go to the university of phoenix university of arizona <laughs> I can say mean things right now, but I won't. It's okay. You uh, say whatever you want. No, I, the, they would be they would be uh, bleeped. Um, basically, what happens is that you go to your college, like your small college where you major in. That's what I went to. Yes, because you get to walk you went up to your department. Y- yes, I went to. I walked up, got my degree, and all that good stuff. But if you, there's another one for the entire school, and it's like it's basically a concert, and where. They, you just stand up, wave for, I believe they said six seconds, and you sit back down, and that's it. That's what you get. I'm, I'm not sitting hmm. down for an, like three hours just to stand up for two seconds. I would have been like, man, we paid all this tuition, and we don't even get like a real ceremony. What's, what is this? I got a ceremony for my college. That's all I cared about. Yeah. Your parents probably were upset, huh? Not at all. They're like, we paid for this, and this is, this is not what we signed up for. I never see my parents so happy in my life. So because they're like, oh my god, he did it. He just exactly. we got across the finish line. Exactly, we got him here. I got I I would I finished in four years, like I promised them. I promised to go to one college and a major at a university, and I promised him <laughs> four years, and I kept that promise. So uh, Clint Capella is out four to six weeks with a thumb injury. For what kind of thumb injury keeps you out that long? I think it broke a thumb. I mean, is it, is it on his shooting hand? I don't know, but can you play basketball with a broken thumb? I mean, a, <laughs> I, I, I could try. Hard to catch a ball with a broken opposable thumb, I think. Yeah, true. Um, how much does this hurt the Rockets? I know that they're kind of a one-man show right now, but Clint Capella is kind of the sidekick to Harden. We know this team has been hurt. Chris Paul, where has he been? Is he coming back? Does anybody know? I have no idea. where he's. Is he even on the bench anymore, like cheering on his team? He, he seems like he's a ghost. So Capella's been kind of the other big positive for the Rockets. Um, Eric Gordon's been hurt. Can Harden keep doing this, or is he just going to get worn out? Because I feel like at some point he's going to hit a wall, right? Like he's every night he's putting up, what is it, 17 in a row where he has at least 30 points. He's putting up 50 points. He's putting up 40 points. He's putting up 35. I mean, this is like every single night. So at some point you got to think like, man, he might get hurt. He might get sore. He might get tired out his legs. Are the Rockets going to be trending in the right direction due to this injury? Uh, I don't know. If you rely too much on one guy, he he can't. Some t- like you're, He's got to get blown up he's got to get beaten up and this is just i feel like this is going to end on a bad note is what i'm saying paul and gordon um have been out for some time 11 games for paul uh, it's been seven for gordon but maybe this run of you know wins because the rockets have been playing great basketball in terms of wins and losses lately uh, maybe this run allows them to spend more time to get healthy and not have to rush it back. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it just, it, it, you gotta, you gotta, uh, how do you, how do I put this? You gotta walk on eggshells, if you will. Anyways, uh, we should take a break and come back and we have a couple more stories to wrap this show up. Some interesting news out of the NFL and of course out of Chicago. We'll be right back.
Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the final segment of the GSMC Sports Podcast. In uh, recap, we've talked about the NFL. Kyle Murray declares for the draft. We're talking about Adam Gase and his uh, press conference, as well as LeBron James' injury and a roundup of the rest of the NBA injuries that's happened. Now let's move on to other news and in, uh, in, uh, quirks about the sports in the last day. Antonio Brown. Jerry Rice and Antonio Brown had a FaceTime the other day, and Jerry Rice said he wants, quote, Tony Brown wants to play here very, very badly in meaning San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Do you see him on the Niners in 2019? I do not. I think too many things would have to, I don't know, align to make that well, happen. There is a betting line in who's favorite to, or the not, there is a favorite who's going to take, who's going to play Antonio Brown in 2019. The Niners are the favorites at the moment. Mm hmm. Yeah, so, I think um, Vegas is really good at making people spend money. Uh, and that sounds like something that they would do. I mean, yeah, but they uh, I don't know. I mean, like, if you're, the, if you're the Steelers, what do you want for Antonio Brown? I would say first-round pick, but I'm not saying this. I'm, the Niners aren't giving up the number two pick. I'm saying if they're giving up anything, it's going to be the next year's second and maybe a third. Problem is, is he worth the first-round pick? Oh, yeah, 100%. I don't think there's anything doubting that. Um, I mean, he's an older receiver, and he has a large contract, so it'd be hard to get a first-round pick for him, to give up first-round pick. If he was like a, a younger player under team control or something like that, I'd say that's easier to swallow. Uh, but the fact is, is that Antonio Brown is automatically going to be the 49ers' second-highest-paid player, and they'd have to give up a first-round pick. And if you're looking at giving up a future first-round pick, there's always – you know that that uh, I think they're planning on winning now, though. That's but there's the always that insecurity. What if you get a top five pick? What if you get a top ten pick? The 49ers are planning on winning now this year. They end up with the number two pick in the draft. Who's to say it can't happen again, right? Well, that that means like everyone has to be injured again. But they or just got the rid quarterback. Of their, well, they got rid of their strength coach. That might help. Or just their quarterback. We know the NFL. All it takes is one injury from you to be a good team to a bad team. And that's basically what it was. We can talk about the 49ers injuries all day, but at the end of the day, it was Jimmy Garoppolo getting hurt. If he was healthy, the team probably wins three or four more games minimum. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean, yeah, I get it. I get the excitement, but I think there needs to be some logic applied to. Like, the Steelers aren't running and selling Antonio Brown. They don't have to. And it actually hurts them if they trade him. So... They're going to they're gonna ask for a hard bargain, I believe, and they probably won't trade them unless they get it. So, yeah. buyer beware. Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, weird things have happened. I mean, <laughs> I think it'd be cool if Antonio Brown played for the 49ers and hung out with Jerry Rice all the time. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. They talked and, about running the hill together, the famous hill that Jerry Rice used to get his, uh, his endurance training on in the offseason. Which made him one of the greatest, like, it's not just because he's the greatest, but his work ethic was also the greatest. I think people really um, forget about that in Jerry Rice's career. But the fact is, there are a lot of teams ahead of in the favorite Vegas uh, for Antonio Brown. Even the Cardinals are above the Steelers. Mm -hmm. 
And I no way is he going in this car. The problem is, is that they're not going to trade him before they take. They're not going to take that twenty million dollar cap hit to trade their maybe their best player. Like that just doesn't make sense. So he, might, he, gets, he might make it a no, uh, no other option though. Yeah, but if they trade him, they'll trade him after the after the deadline, right? After June first, I'm sh- I'm sure, but I mean, like, if you're the Steelers, Jeff, are you are you literally going to trade your best football player and give away twenty million dollars? Dude, the Steelers have done worse. Let's just get really. Real. They've made crazier decisions. I can't recall. I don't know. Signing Roethlisberger that contract was pretty intense. I mean, really? He won them two Super Bowls. Yeah, but he also has been arrested, and he's also had rape charges, and he's also um, alleged rape charges. I mean, charges. do you really think that that would be a that was a weirder decision than tr- than trading your best player and getting and getting penalized twenty million dollars to do so? That's like a pretty devastating move for a football team to make. Like to get rid of your best football player and a seventh of your salary cap is a lot. Yeah, but what do you get? I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not the Steelers organization, so anything could possibly he could, happen. He could get traded. I just don't know how they get out of that. I, they can't take the hit. Like I don't know if there's something they can do where they can get out of paying that twenty million dollar fee to trade him before June first. But if not, then he's he'll get traded after June first, if anything. Yeah. And by then, him and Big Ben might be best friends again. Who knows? Not a chance. Absolutely not. Maybe. No. No. No way. You they are at each is. other's throats. No. He. They're if they're gonna be on the same team, they're gonna just avoid each other. But play in the game. They're gonna. They're gonna still play Maybe. well together. But no, they're not reconciling. No way. With those two egos, absolutely not. But that is all the time we have today. You don't want to talk about the Bears field goal challenge? Oh yeah, everybody Nobody won. Mi- everybody <laughs> missed. Shocker! Because it's forty-three yards. No one was even close. Uh, one guy was really close. Oh, really? Yeah. He missed by like two feet. He he had the distance easy. He could have made it from like 55. <laughs> it's funny to see. He just hooked it a little bit. Yeah, and no one else was close, though. You see, there there were so many kicks that it's were so bad. It's also illegal to give away free beer for a year, so that wasn't going to happen. The bear, That brewery was actually going to pay for, pay for tickets to a game because they found out that they couldn't do that. They're like, oh, it's it's like saying like, um, uh, like you're running for president, or like like Trump saying we're gonna we're gonna build a wall and we're gonna disband everything, and they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, right. It's like, well, that sucks. But anyways, that's all the time we have for. Thank you for joining us. Tune us in tomorrow. We will have more NBA news probably, and hopefully more NFL news because Tuesday can be interesting. And as always, I'm Jeff Malinoff, that's Mark Souza, and we will see you tomorrow. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program